So, we want to show you how to quantify your journey from not enough money to lots of money, or from sickness, arthritis in your hips to feeling wonderful, or from a relationship that isn't working to one that is fabulous in all ways, or to a business enterprise that you can't get off the ground to one that is functioning so powerfully that thousands are employed and millions are benefiting. In other words, we want you to quantify your journeys between where you are and where you want to be. And the way you do that is by being aware that every indication to you is vibrational and by understanding what the indicators are. This is always true. What I think and how I feel and what manifests is always a vibrational match. But here's the big kicker. What manifests isn't manifesting instantaneously. So you've got all this leeway that makes you sloppy. If you thought a negative thought and a brick would fall on your head every time, you'd clean up your thinking. <laughs> but you're not here to be punished about your thinking. You're here to understand your thinking. You're here to use your thinking, your focus to create. And it is such a delicious experience to come into conscious awareness that what I'm thinking right now and what I'm feeling about it is setting into motion something in my vibrational future. And what I'm thinking right now, most important, what I'm thinking right now is bringing me close to many things that are already in my vibrational future. Can you see how someone could get their heart broken and then they could get sick and then they could lose all of their money and then they could wreck their car all in the same week? In other words, it's easy to understand how they get focused in that place of despair. And then the only thoughts that they have access to are thoughts like that. And so they just beat the drum of it, beat the drum of it, beat the drum of it. And if they've been doing it for a while, then their vibrational escrow is full of all that kind of stuff. And in a very short period of time, they begin manifesting the results of how they've been feeling, you see. So we don't want you to be afraid of your vibrational escrow. It's full of wonderful things too. But we want you to be aware of what you're doing vibrationally because we want you to know which way you're going along this journey. We want you to know when you're headed toward what you want or when you're headed away from what you want. You can tell by the way you feel whether you are moving toward what you want or whether you are moving in opposition to what you want. That's what your guidance system is all about. You understand that, don't you? Never again will you ever feel negative emotion and not know what it means. So just stop and laugh and most of all make peace with where you are that's the most important thing that we want you to leave this room with today because if you're here relative to money or relative to abundance of any kind or relative to wellness or relative to relationship if you're here and you want to be here and you're condemning the fact that you're here you cannot budge at all toward what you want because your condemnation of where you are is holding you so much here. It's as if you've got your feet nailed to the floor. You've got to make peace with where you are. And think about it. When you give yourself a break or when you give somebody else a break, when you try to make it better, when you try to make the best of something, don't you feel relief when you do that? Have you ever made a mistake? <laughs> And have you ever been in a situation where someone whose opinion you care very much about noticed that you had made the mistake? And then have you ever had the benefit of that person who you care very much about their opinion who saw you make the mistake? Have you ever seen them laugh and say, isn't that the way we all do? Esther tells people, the reason I'm so smart is because I've made all of those mistakes. I made them all. And then she offers a joke like the one-armed alligator wrangler, she says. We learn as we go. <laughs> In other words, looking for a way or a reason to diffuse the feeling. And when someone does that in the midst of your feeling uncomfortable about your mistake, what do you feel? You feel relief, don't you? In other words, someone has helped you make peace with where you are. When you try to make the best of something, you move closer into vibrational alignment with what you want. When you try to make the worst of it, you're moving in opposition. So why does anybody make the worst of it? Why do you make the worst of something? Well, you make the worst of it because every fiber of your being knows that things are supposed to go well for you. And when they're not going well, you're sort of freaking out because you know it is supposed to be better. 
And you've also had so many people say, now, why did you do that? And so you've gotten in this habit of explaining. Because, you know, most of the people around you don't really remember about this vibrational stuff. Most of the people around you are living very conditional love. They tell you, I live unconditional love, but they don't. What they're living is, when I see that condition, I feel good, so I'll vote for that. When I see that condition, I feel bad, so I'll vote against that. We'll do everything in our power to get that away from us. And we say, that's very conditional love. That's saying, change the condition so that I can have a better feeling response to the condition. And it never works. It never, ever works. Because when you're looking at the condition that needs to be changed, you're activating the condition that needs to be changed in you. And you are becoming more of the problem that you're wanting to solve. That's why terrorism is becoming more. In other words, you just cannot kill everybody that doesn't agree with you. You can't do it. You'll kill enough of them and pretty soon you'll be down to the nitty gritty that is just you guys and you'll start disagreeing with each other. In other words, you cannot get to where you want to be by pushing against what you do not want. It never ever works, you say. So what do you do? What do you do when you're standing in the midst of a culture or an environment or a house or a marriage, a relationship, a situation where you clearly see things that you do not want to see? What do you do? They make you feel bad when you see them. Don't you want to instruct those people to clean up their act? Little Kate, granddaughter Kate, three years old, adorable in every possible way. Esther looks at her and turns inside out with love. Kate is the perfect being. She is so lovable, so easy to love. Just look at her, just listen to her, just remember her. Just think about her in any way, upside down, all around. Just think about her and love radiates from you. And shouldn't everybody damn well be that way? In other words, shouldn't everybody be that lovable? When you got a lovable one like that, sure makes you not like the ones that aren't lovable very much. <laughs> and don't they all owe it to you to be just that lovable? And we say, therein lies your problem. There are lovable ones that you love and then there are not lovable ones that you hate. And then you demand that they change the way they be so that you can feel better. And we say, oh, what a big job you have. Just when you get your son understanding what you need to be happy, trained really well, he meets some girl and does what she wants. <laughs> And if your happiness depends upon anybody else performing in any way to please you, it's no wonder you feel out of control because they're all selfishly oriented too. One of the most humorous things we ever hear is when a very selfish one says to you, don't do that, you selfish one. And what they mean is don't satisfy your selfishness, satisfy mine. And you just got to wonder who gets to decide whose selfishness gets to be satisfied. And we say source has decided long ago. Everyone gets to have their selfishness satisfied. Every perspective of self is of paramount importance to source. And when you are in alignment with your own desire, your world will be perfect. When you think about it, if every point of consciousness standing in every situation were preferring something and source was answering every preference, then wouldn't the whole be better off? So how is it that you got in competition with one another? How is it that you came to believe that if he gets what he wants, somehow I'm deprived of what I want? Why do you put yourself in competition for the same prize? when the resources are infinite. In fact, the resources expand exponentially to the percentage or the perfection of your desire. When you want it, if this time-space reality has given you the facility to desire it, to identify it, to want it, this time-space reality has the facilities to provide it for you in manifestation. You couldn't want it if it wasn't possible to get it, you see. So when you understand that you are not in competition for any resources at all, you never say, well, I have been well for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I've been well for as long as I can remember. So I'm going to be sick for the next 10 years and allow some poor sick person to have my share of wellness. <laughs> you don't do that, do you? Why not? 
because you don't see the relationship between your receiving of the wellness and they're not receiving of it. You don't think you're sucking up the wellness. And yet, relative to abundance or money, you often think that the rich guy is getting more than his fair share. So you want to chop up the pie and distribute it evenly, only to discover that it all ends up back in his pile again really soon. <laughs> so you divide it all up and spread it all out evenly again, and it all ends up over in his pile again very soon. And you say, what's going on? I must not be worthy. And we say, no, you're just beating the drum of not enough money. He's beating the drum, money comes easily to me. He's beating the drum that says, they can't take it away from me as fast as I can earn it. He's beating the drum that says, this is an abundant universe and all good things come to me. And it's fun to figure out how to let it in. And I'm not taking score of my well-being by my money. I'm taking score of my well-being by how good I feel. And this is really fun. I'm really enjoying the money flowing into my experience. It's a poor guy over here saying, you've got all the money. You've got all the money. How come you've got all the money? Why do you think he's got all the money? You get a few billion people complaining that he's got all the money. Sure, he's going to get all the money. In other words, the things you vote most against, you're really voting for the other side. When you vote against somebody, when you push really hard against something that you do not want, you're holding yourself in vibrational discord to something that you do want. In other words, you help the other guy win over and over and over and over in pushing against what you do not want. Well, this has been fun. We are eager to talk with you about anything that is important to you. We want to help you to realize that you are the creator, that you are the vibrational attractor, that you have guidance within you, and we will show you how to move up the emotional scale. Can you separate the pain that you're feeling in your body from the emotion that you're having about it? Is it possible to hurt in your body and feel hopeful? It is. And when you separate the emotion from the physical action state of being, is it possible to be bound in traffic that is not moving at all and be happy? Or when you're bound in traffic that is not moving at all, do you just owe it to the world to be frustrated out of your mind? Frustrated out of your mind, practice it often enough. And you will be bound in traffic everywhere you go, even where there usually is not traffic that is binding. <laughs> the universe will find a way of helping you to rendezvous. You'll brush your teeth just that much longer. You'll take that one more phone call. Or you'll forget what you're doing and turn left instead of right. And you'll find yourself right in the middle of what you've been practicing vibrationally. But if you're sitting in traffic and you're enjoying what you're hearing on the radio or on your tape player if you are sitting in traffic and you're singing with your kids looking at the flowers out the window making the best of your moment making peace with where you are and choosing your vibration rather than letting the conditions choose your vibration in other words you're doing your own thinking you're not just responding to conditions you're thinking in spite of conditions or along with conditions can you feel the difference when you start thinking regardless of the conditions the conditions will change but if you only think about the conditions nothing can change for you you see it you comment on it, you see it, you think about it, you see it, you tell others about it, you see it, you remember it, you see it, you comment on it, you see it, you tell others about it, and then it actualizes around you and you say, well, it's true. <laughs> Shouldn't I tell the truth? And we say there are plenty of truths that make your heart sing and plenty of truths that make you feel sad. Tell the truths that make your heart sing and ignore the rest. Easier said than done, we know, but that is your work. Your work is to care so much about the way you feel that you are not willing to put up with anything that doesn't feel good. Not anything. Not a squeal in your sound system. Not a nagging wife. <laughs> Nothing. Don't put up with anything that doesn't feel good. Find a way around it. Find a way to make it feel better to you.